Hi everyone, welcome to episode 16. My guest today is BJJ Black Belt from Remedy BJJ and MMA out of Milton, Florida, Professor Trey Alador. This episode of the Let's Talk Jiu-Jitsu podcast is brought to you by Guard Players Open Jiu-Jitsu Championship on April 27th in Nepean, Ontario. This is a gi-only event. They've got adults, masters, seniors, youth, teens, juniors, kids. Uh, for more information, go check out their Facebook page and you can also send them an email at info at guardplayersopen.com. Not much time left to sign up for the event since it's only a few weeks away. This is going to be a great tournament and we're happy to be part of it. It's time to high five and fist bump. A jiu jitsu podcast for the everyday grappler. Let's talk subs. Let's talk positions. Let's talk dominating the mats. Welcome to the Let's Talk Jiu Jitsu podcast with Raymond Terrence. My guest today is a BJJ black belt and runs the Remedy BJJ and MMA Academy out of Milton, Florida. Trey Alador, let's talk jiu-jitsu, buddy. Let's do it, man. I'm hey. excited to be here. Appreciate y'all having me. Hey, thanks for being on the show. And this happened super quick. Like I was telling you on Facebook, normally when we try to book, uh, you know, wh- wh- uh, whether it be professors or just r- uh, random students, uh, a little all over the world, it normally takes a, tup- a couple weeks to get things going and to get things moving. And we spoke yesterday and you were like, I'm free tomorrow. So yeah. that was amazing. We got it done short and sweet. <laughs> yeah, was, I, don't, I don't like to play around. I want to do something. Let's do it, you know? Nice. I, I like that attitude. <laughs> so maybe uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, uh, when you started jiu-jitsu, and uh, how you got into it. Yeah, for sure. I started jiu-jitsu like 2008, 2009. Um, and I went to – well, actually, I started a new job. I'm a lineman um, for a power lineman for the power company. And um, I had a good friend. He started hired in same time as I did, and uh, he was like, he was fighting professional MMA, and uh, I was like, dude, I wanna wanna try that out. I wanna go do that. And uh, he was like, well, there's not a lot of places to train. Um, he traveled all the way to Mobile, Alabama, which was a good hour away, and um, I was like, he's like, well, you can come train my garage with with a couple of other fighters or you, you can come to this karate place they do it a couple times a week um and i was like okay well let me go to this, the karate place and you know train there so i met him up there trained started liking it uh four months in did my first competition which was a naga um ended up winning first place and, and fell in love with it um and so i've been training ever since competing ever since and um you know just eating it up just as much as I could. I, I would travel for seminars. At that time, there wasn't a lot of places to train in this area, so we had to travel pretty much. I mean, there was like a like a couple purple belts and maybe a couple blue belts, but that was it. So we'd have to travel a good hour to get like some, you know, solid knowledge. But um, we made it happen, and, um, you know, it's a pretty good group of people training here in Pensacola now. A lot of people have moved here started gyms and um it's, it's pretty good going on around here now oh that's great that sounds pretty good and um when i looked you up like we were saying a little bit before we started the show um everyone like you were saying everyone thinks you guys are in that boot of florida and that's what i thought yeah. too when i googled you so maybe explain to people where exactly you guys are in florida yeah so we're like right there at the tip uh close to alabama so it'd be like north uh northwest florida and, um, yeah, a lot of people think, oh, you're in Florida, you're down by Disney, Miami, all this stuff. I'm like, nah, actually, we're not even close to any of that. So um, we're right there at the tip close to Alabama and Pensacola, Florida. Beautiful beaches, beautiful place. Um, it's just like total opposite of what most people think when you say Florida. <laughs> so you're not exactly right next to the ocean. Yeah, I mean, we're, I'm, where I'm at, Milton, is probably like 30 minutes from the beach. Um, so Pensacola is like really close to the beach, Pensacola Beach. Um, but like, and the beaches are gorgeous, but it's not like, um, yeah, that's the Gulf, think, right? Yeah, the Gulf. Yeah. I think just most people think like, oh, Disney world and stuff like that's about like seven, eight hours away. So it's not close. Okay. Okay. And what, uh, who is, who is your first professor? Well, um, I'm under Helio Seneca. Um, you know, he's part of the Gracie lineage and uh, I actually grew up in the same house as Henzo and Half Gracie. Um, and I was under him since day one. So the guy that I started 
training with was a purple belt and he was under him um and then i received my blue belt from seneca and then every other belt from him since that day um and my loyalty is just lied with him um he's an amazing instructor world champion in 1996 he was a world champion you know he's done a little bit of everything kind of an old school guy but um i mean he's still i think he, he did a he won in 1996 he won the uh, world championship against megaton and then he they ran it back in uh, Abu Dhabi, I think it was a year ago, and he ended up winning again. So um, he still competes here and there, and he's a great instructor. Was that the picture that I saw on your Instagram? It was a picture of Seneca with his arm up against Megaton. I guess that was the fight? Yep, exactly. That was nice. it, exactly. I was in Arizona actually recently and was trying to hook up with, uh, with Professor Diaz at, uh, at his gym in uh in um in phoenix but uh, unfortunately i couldn't get there at the same time as him he was yeah. on vacation or something but uh, that was a cool picture actually yeah. Hmm. yeah yeah and they've been friends i mean they're friends and everything but it was pretty cool to like run it back that many years later and compete again on the big stage against each other so uh, it was pretty cool who is uh soneka under i think is it carlos jr or yeah he got his from carlos um and so he was part of the original Gracie Baja that helped started them. Um, so, yeah, he's a part of the Gracie lineage. You know, he's kind of got his own um, association. Um, but he's still, like, best friends with Henzo and Half and all of them. So. And does he ever come out uh, to Florida to see you guys? Oh, yeah, definitely. We usually have him in about two or three times a year. And then um, we usually will make the trip to Kentucky. That's his home base. Um, about once a year at least. Okay, well, that's really good. And, and you're learning from, I mean, someone whose jiu-jitsu is pretty old school. Is there, a, 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 do you find that that he's still been able to keep up, you know, you know with everything going on in jiu-jitsu now? You know, we say that jiu-jitsu is modernizing and things are changing and whatnot. So I'm assuming that, you know, he's, he's stayed true to his roots. And I guess when it comes to his black belts too, it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, he's, of course, got solid jiu-jitsu, and um, it's old school, but he still is, he's in there. I mean, every time he comes, we're learning something new, you know, and um, he even te he teaches uh, the baby bolo is what he calls it. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, he's, he's still integrating with the new stuff, you know, and he's literally, like, somewhere all around the world every weekend. So, um, he gets to roll and train with all kind of different people and see different games so he stays pretty in touch with the new stuff i find that's uh, a common thing there where a lot of the uh, older school um instructors uh the ones that are teaching guys like you that are black belts now they're uh you know they're a lot of them are done with the academy thing and they're just going around the world and doing seminars all over the country yeah and all over the world for and yeah. yeah that's pretty cool too and i like he splits his time from like america to brazil probably like 50 50 almost and um but like i said every weekend he's he's somewhere new in the world and it, it's pretty cool just to watch his his instagram watch, see where he's at you know where's seneca um but yeah it's, it's pretty cool to see that that's really neat tell us a little bit about your academy what's going on uh with remini bjj mma when, when did you start there um so I, we started in the, I started at the karate studio, and then I helped a friend open up a gym, um, and then I kind of branched off on my own, did my own thing, and I started, I was about 30, 40 minutes away from the gym that I, a friend of mine I helped start, and uh, I started, I built a metal building in my backyard, spent all this money and uh, to get extra training, that was my main goal, just like, I was having a baby, and I didn't want to, I wanted to be at home as much as I could, but I wanted to train as much as I could, I wanted to compete. So I built this metal building, put mats in it, and started having friends over. And uh, I was a purple belt at the time. And it was just, just to get extra training, you know. And um, next thing I know, long story short, I got like 14, 15 people coming over to the house training. <laughs> That's awesome. Some of them, I, yeah, some of them I know. Some of them, um, you know, I met for the first time when they came over. And, uh it kind of got to a point where I needed like do it full time because these guys were wanting to fight. They were wanting to compete. And, um, so like in 2014, I think we officially named remedy. Um, and then we kind of went full bore with it and, um, got a, I got a business license and, um, opened up a storefront and that's kind of how we went with it. And I didn't want, I was training people for free. 
and like in American culture, man, they don't. Nobody, it seems like <laughs> they don't want nothing for free. Like if they're if it's for free, it's not good. That's not much different so, here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, like people would call up and and be like, "Oh, how much are you charge?" I'm like, "Oh, well, it's, it's just free. I just want you to come, just come train, you know." And they're like, they would get sketched out about that. Which I don't blame. It's kind of, it's kind of seems sketchy. You just call some random yeah. phone number for martial arts yeah, training. It's free. But, <laughs> I mean, I was legit. Like, I was legit purple belt, and I was winning competitions and doing good. So, But anyways, 2014 was when we uh, officially became Team Remedy. And were you – what belt were you then? I, I was a purple belt then. When yeah, you I was a purple belt. When you opened your official belt. storefront? Uh, your first official location? Let's see. I think that's when I when – I, well, when we officially started Team Remy, I was a purple belt. But shortly after that, I got my brown belt. And then that's when we got a storefront. So I was a brown okay. belt when I actually opened up the gym, cool. like and, a storefront. And where did the name come from, Remedy? Yeah, so that's a good question because, like, a lot of people ask that, like, oh, what is, what, where did Remedy come from? So I had a, a Marine. We have a, a flight school. and it's, in the, it's a Navy base probably 20 minutes away. It's Whiting Field. And I had this Marine come in town, and I don't know exactly how he found me. Some Somehow on the internet, because at that time I didn't have a website or anything like that. So I don't know if he looked up some of my highlights or something on YouTube. But anyways, he right. called me up, and he said, yeah, he said, uh, hey, man, he said, I, I see you train in this area. Can I come train with you at your gym? And I was like, well, yeah, absolutely. So um, he came, and, and we trained, and we kicked off a friendship. His name's Eddie. He's still a good guy, a uh, friend of mine in California now. Um, and every time he come over to the house, he would tag my, the metal building. It wasn't a real official gym or anything. He would tag it on Facebook, Trey's Remedy. And I was like, and I, every time he did, I was like, man, I kind of like that. Like jujitsu is the remedy to everything. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Like, that's what we say. It's the, it's our therapy, right? Yeah. So I was like, well, that's, that's our name. <laughs> remedy Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So, really cool. it's a um, good story. it's stuck. Yep. That's it. Oh, that's really neat. And I saw on your website, you guys offer a lot of classes. You got, I mean, uh, not just BJJ. You have Muay Thai. You have MMA. You have lots of things going on. Maybe give us an idea of what what, what does a typical BJJ class look like at, uh, at, at Remedy? I saw the classes were about an hour and a half long, I think. Yep, they are. And uh, we do things a little bit different. Um, so, like, we do about 30 minutes of drills, um, movement drills, and then we'll do actual, like, positioning and um technique drills everything that i do in jiu-jitsu class i want it to be related to jiu-jitsu and i don't want like a student to come in and work out for 30 minutes like yeah working out is great yeah they're gonna get in great shape and they're gonna see benefits but like i want their jiu-jitsu to get better so for 30 minutes we do jiu-jitsu related movements and it's a good warm up you know good workout and then um i teach technique for about 30 minutes and then we'll roll for about 30 minutes so um, that's usually the class. I know a lot of people, you'll do running and jumping jacks and squats and all that stuff. We don't, we cut all that out, you know, and we do just, just jujitsu, whatever is going to excel. My students jujitsu game is what I want to do. I think that's a great plan, Trey. I mean, we have a guy up here, a uh, world champion, um, competitor as one of our instructors, uh, at our, at our academy named uh, Cascal. That's his nickname. Yeah, and he teaches similar. He has uh, usually always does drills in the beginning and jujitsu related drilling, and just that for me for myself anyway. I get tired just doing the drills, and so it gets conditioning at the same time. Exactly, and then, and then we do some technique, like you said, and then rolling after for sure. Exactly. Do you find that's the do, best way? Do you find that um, uh, drilling is becoming less? and less a part of jiu-jitsu or do you find again where we're talking you know where we're from canada so maybe the canadian culture or jiu-jitsu culture might be a little different than what's going on in the states uh but do you find that a lot of academies are spending more time drilling i i think they are spending more time drilling um in america i went and did a seminar a, a friend of mine was training at uh cyborgs gym in miami and i went and flew down there stayed with him for a week and trained and uh, the last day, Buchecha came in and did a seminar. I saw that picture. And, uh, yeah. So <laughs> one of and one of the things Buchecha said was like, he was like, when I came to America, he's like, I wasn't used to drilling. We didn't, you know, we didn't do a lot of drilling in Brazil. We did a lot of rolling. And I forgot who told him this. He said, but someone he respected and listened to, you know, obviously said, you know, if you want to become a world champion, you're going to have to start drilling. 
And uh, that stuck with me because when I, you know, did that seminar, he was already a multi-time world champion. But um, I think to better your jiu-jitsu, drilling is a is a very important role that you need. You know, I think it's just it's obvious to me. Yeah. And do you, well, when it comes to drills, if you have people that are going to compete, will you have them do specific drills based on what, you know, their forte is when it comes to jiu-jitsu? Or do you have something a little bit more generic for your day-to-day? Or We have our generic drills that we'll do um, just to kind of get warmed up. But then once, you know, everybody's loose and warmed up, we'll start to do some specific things, um, positional drills, you know, getting out of bad positions and, um, sometimes I'll even let them have like a, you know, a, a free pick where, you know, you pick a technique that, um, you know, you know, you need to work on, you know, you need work on it cause you haven't been hitting it rolling or whatever and drill that technique, you know, 10, 20 times and just work on that one technique. So yeah, we'll dial it in once it gets closer to, um, tournament, especially if like the majority of the team is doing that, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of pick and go with that and make sure everybody gets what they need. Nice. And what's the one drill that your students will hate you for? <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know that any of them necessarily would hate me for. I mean, maybe they won't tell me. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I try to keep it fun and, and change it up a little bit. You know, we, we do some of, like, helicopter arm bars. We usually do those, like, every single class. And it's just to get the hips warmed, you know, nice. and moving. But um, I don't know that any of them will like hate me if look if it's, i kind of think of it like this if i don't want to do it they probably don't want to do it you know what i'm saying so like there's some things that hey, you need to do because it's you know you're going to make your jujitsu better and and that's just what you need to do but um i kind of like always thought about jujitsu like if it wasn't fun i wouldn't be doing it so i don't want to make anything unfun you know mm. no that's a good way to look at it and speaking of um uh, helicopter arm bars. I watched some highlight footage of you on YouTube, actually, when you were a blue belt, murking a lot of people and doing really <laughs> well in competition. And I have to say, you spent most of your time arm barring people. Is there a link there somewhere? Yeah, probably so, man. Um, like the arm bar and triangle, just triangle more so, I think I would say personally, but they just kind of come natural. And, uh, yeah, I had blue belt and purple belt. Armbar was one of my go-tos for sure. Nice. And you, uh, what, 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 what is your thing? If we were to talk about, you know, someone were to say Professor Trey, you know, his go-to is this. His go-to submission or maybe his go-to technique would be this. What, what, what would you say that is? Uh, they would all say triangle for sure. I just find them like I, I don't have like extremely long legs. I mean, I don't have short legs either, but like I just find triangles. I hit them a lot so they would definitely say triangle so let me take a wild guess here a typical role with professor trey would be you go to open guard first i guess and allow them your your opponent to fall into your triangle i guess Uh, yeah pretty much (laughs) man but you know like that would definitely be like blue belt purple belt trey but um man i got to where i really don't care like i love passing the guard i love playing the top position bottom position i kind of like it all at first you know blue belt days i was like man i don't i don't i hate playing top position like i, I don't want to do it but um i kind of like made myself start doing it and then once i kind of got good at it I, I don't mind it i like it now hmm. cool yeah i watch uh, a lot of the um all of the four a lot of the all the fight to wins actually on flow grappling and i noticed nah. that you were actually in fight to win pro 10 against jc pennington actually that you won yeah. that match if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah that was uh that was pretty cool because um jc is a great uh jiu-jitsu competitor um very established mma uh competitor in the louisiana scene um actually just moved to tallahassee good guy um, so that was a, that was a pretty big fight, like for me, cause I'm just a jujitsu nerd, you know? And, um, it was, that was pretty cool. And then actually just to throw that out there, I went against his professor, uh, Josh Mancuso and I got beat. So I had a fight <laughs> to win. So he, they got their revenge. Nice. <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, so when it comes to the fight to wins, that's a, uh, obviously it's a very popular event. Unfortunately, it doesn't come to Canada yet, but they are roaming around close to the border. So a lot of our, nice. our guys are trying to get out to Boston and somewhere close by. Yeah. Um, is there something specific that, that you enjoy about those type of events, all those fight to wins? Man, they fight to wins an awesome promotion, and um, they do. They're just really professional, you know. And it's I think it's helped you know propel jujitsu and putting it on the map, you know. Um, so shows like that are are really going to help jujitsu grow. Um, so it's just kind of cool being you know on the in front of the lights. You know, it's it's special. It's all about you, you know, and you're out there it's not like a tournament where you know you've got 12 other people around you competing and everybody's watching you your own pay-per-view and um i think it's a great thing for the jiu-jitsu scene oh definitely and how how is the uh, jiu-jitsu scene around you know uh, milton florida i guess around your area are the schools uh do they communicate together or are, are the professors close is there still a lot of rivalries going on uh, how how's that scene look um, it's not too bad. Um, I try to be friends with, with everyone. Um, like my goal is to make, help jujitsu grow. And that was like one of my, my goals on doing tournaments around here because there wasn't any tournaments around here. There's been like a couple tournaments in Pensacola, but they don't even come here anymore. There's really no good venues in Pensacola is one of the main reasons. But, um, most of the schools work together pretty good. Um, like I will have this tournament coming up this weekend and, um, probably like 99% of the schools within driving distance will have at least, you know, two or three students there. Um, so got pretty good, um, support around here. And, um, you know, like there's been some guys like that have moved from out of town into Pensacola and opened up and they've done pretty good and they've got good attitudes and helping each other. So I think it's a good thing. That's good. That's good. Are there a lot of uh, BGJ academies around your area? So, like, I'm in Milton, which is like 15 minutes from Pensacola, and Pensacola is like the bigger city. Um, and then there's Milton and Pace is pretty much the same thing. There's one other school in Pace um, that's like five minutes down the road from me, and then there's probably one, two about five off the top of my head um schools in pensacola okay. <clears throat> so there's it, it's grown pretty good i mean we're like a smaller city you know so there's um there's not a lot but um it's almost like there's five schools within you know 10 15 minutes of each other so it's kind of full at the same time right okay that's great and in your academy do you have a lot of up-and-comers i mean what what uh, what what does your student base look like do you have any uh you know when we talk about uh people getting promoted to black belt or some some prospects that you have going on do you have any uh key students that are you know uh, doing high-end uh, competitions traveling a lot yeah so like uh, pretty much all of our instructors have like done a you know a super fight show um, I guess what you can consider a you know professional level like they've gotten paid um, so we've got a pretty good instructor um, base I got a brown belt DJ Roberts um, he's done several um, super fight shows and you know he'll next few couple years he'll probably be getting his black belt and then I've got um, a lot of up and comer like blue belt some of them are fighting MMA doing very well um, I got a lot of young uh, girls i got two girls that are like killing it um sydney pruitt and leilani they both are like just they almost train every single day and they compete a lot they both do really great um then, like i said i got a lot of uh blue belts that are two of them just fall uh saturday actually three of them three of them fall saturday night or friday night excuse me and uh they all won so they did really great so we got a good group of of people and really like um a diverse group because we got MMA fighters, jiu-jitsu competitors. I got a guy that's 70 years old that, you know, wants to train for self-defense. And then um, I've got kids all the way down to like four years old. So pretty and, uh, big group. Trey, out of all these people you're talking about that are that are doing real well and they're competing locally, I'm assuming, are these are they also going and winning um, um, tournaments like uh, the Worlds and Pan Ams and stuff like that? 
So, like, I haven't had anybody win worlds or panhands or anything like that that have been under me um, yet. I think that's that's coming. Um, I've had some that, like, DJ and Sydney both have won Atlanta Open IBJJF. Um, they've won several super fights. Um, so, I see a lot of positive things. You know, we're still a young team um, in comparison, but I think that uh, the future will be definitely – is definitely bright. That's great. We were actually recently talking about – um, how expensive it was to compete. You know, there's a lot of guys and girls out there who mm-hmm. want to compete and they want to get out there and they want to travel, get their name out there and show how good their jiu-jitsu is, but it's just so hard to do so when it's so expensive, you know, for to actually get out there and you have to pay for travel and hotel or whatnot. And you were saying a little bit around your area that, you know, tournaments tend not to go out that way. Um, I guess that's something that's a, a little hard on, on the jiu-jitsu scene in your area too, knowing that if you want to compete, you got to travel so far to be able to do so right exactly yeah and that's that was like the downside so there was like two um tournaments in pensacola that i know of um and then i think fuji they kind of branched out and started doing like um tournaments all over the place so they actually came to pensacola too but um before that we were like hey let's i have a friend that's an mma promoter and he trains jiu-jitsu he's a purple belt and a pro fighter as well and he trained with me under me and uh, he's like man we really need to do jiu-jitsu tournaments i kept putting them off and um i was like all right well yeah that's a good idea but i'm busy with the gym you know Mm -hmm. and uh, he kept bugging me and bugging me and finally i I gave in and we did one tournament and it was it it went really well and um had a really good turnout probably 200 competitors and um we went the sub sub only route which you know i'm I like all types of jiu-jitsu, all types of grappling. So I see pros and cons and, you know, points versus sub only and all that stuff. But um, it's been going really well for us. That's great. Uh, Yeah, that's something I I was leading into, which is perfect. You kind of brought me there at the same time. So you run a tournament called the Southeastern Submission Classic. Now, I saw that and I saw Kakuto Challenge. Are are those both the same event? Okay, so I'm glad you asked about Kakuto because – First of all, them guys are awesome people. Byron is Kakuto. So Byron is based out of uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. And he's had Kakuto for years, and it's a sub-only tournament series. Um, And I think he's kind of getting out of the tournament um, part of it, and he's going to start to do more like super fight shows and streaming and stuff. But but anyways, he's a great friend of mine and great friend of – um, one of my instructors, uh, DJ Roberts. And so he's been like a huge staple of help and support for us. Um, matter of fact, they just purchased all his mats from him. So we've got all new but used mats for, for our <laughs> tournament. Nice. Um, but that's them. They're Kakuto. And then we're Southeastern Submission Classic. Okay, so you do a sub-only tournament. By the way, you 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 actually have become one of my bestest friends for hosting a submission-only tournament. Yeah. So yes. I, I could throw two things out on you actually in regards to that. So we kind of understand how you feel when it comes to not many tournaments coming your way because actually here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, um, uh, to host a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament is actually illegal. So, I know. I've seen that, man. That's horrible. It's crazy. So we know how you feel. So if we have to, if we want to compete, we have to travel to be able to do so. Yeah. Secondly, I've now fallen in love with submission only since uh, starting, I guess, as a purple belt two years ago. Yeah. I, I really started getting into submission only tournaments and really saw the advantage of doing submission only versus points. I guess yeah. um, my not my 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 maybe my dissatisfaction for the point system maybe kind of grew a little bit as a purple belt. And then when I found sub only, I was like, I like it was something that I needed. It kind of rejuvenated my outlook on competing in jujitsu. Uh, maybe nice. tell us a little bit about how or why you decided to go along the submission only route versus the points route yeah so there was a couple reasons um one was we wanted to be different we wanted to be different than what most people are doing most people are doing points and um with points there's a lot of dissatisfaction people get upset they're like oh that wasn't a point oh that was a point oh they didn't hold it for three seconds oh that was advantage that wasn't an advantage so there's always uh grief with the point system, you know, um, which, like I said, there's pros and cons to sub only and points. So, but um, we wanted to do something different. 
there was no sub only tournaments around our area for hundreds of miles other than Atlanta, which is four and a half miles. And that'd be Kakuto. We were friends with them. Um, and I, and I think the sub only scene's growing. Um, so I was like, well, let, let's do this. Let's do this. Something different that uh, I think will be, you know, positive. It will give the people in this area somewhere to compete locally. We'll make it affordable and we'll just try to make people happy. Like, you know, we're not going to DQ you because you reap. We're not going to, you know, DQ you because you did this on accident. You know, we're going to like make it pleasant for everybody to compete and try to make everybody happy, which you can't make everybody happy, but we try. <laughs> um, and so we went that route and so far we've had, I think one complaint. Um, and that was just a confusion of rules, I believe. Um, because we go with like the EBI over time. And so uh, I you think they're a little a- confused. Where you start in a um, either the back or yeah on the back arm, or arm. oh right okay oh, yeah cool. okay. yeah we do that because um, I really like it uh, because there's a declared winner and there's a declared loser so like I've done a super fight we've actually put on a, a professional super fight show um, and we didn't do the EBI rules and we did like okay because I was on the time frame and I didn't want to. You can go three rounds for three minutes each if you go EBI. Um, so I didn't want to go an extra nine minutes for each bout. So I was like, well, let's do first point wins and try to get these matches in and try to get as many people on the show as we can. Um, and there was more complaints with that than I've, I've had in like four or five tournaments. So I was like, I'm never doing that again. Mm-hmm. But the EBI rules, there's a declared winner and a declared loser. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts, you know. So remind me how the EBI rule goes now. How do they just dis- once a match the time is up? How do they um, decide who starts on the back and who starts coin flip? I think it's a coin flip. Really? Yep. Yeah. Coin flip. Um, so coin flip. Whoever wins a coin flip, they get to pick the back position or the arm bar position. Um, if the first person gets a submission, the second person gets a chance to get oh, the yeah. submission. That's right. Okay. Yep. And then if they get a sum- if they both get a submission, it goes by fastest submission. Um, if they don't, if neither one gets a submission, goes the second round or the third round, no submissions, and then it will be declared the winner by the fastest over uh, skate. So, and that's the total escape time. So every round you add it up. And how long are your um, uh, are the rounds or each match at the um, at the uh, submission classic? So it just depends on the belt level. Um, off the top of my head. Without looking at the paperwork, I think the white belts are five minutes and the blue belts are six minutes. Um, I think the kids are a little bit lower than that. But, um, you know, I, I think the sub only is a good thing. The The pros about are the cons about those sub only is some people will give up position. And I, I don't like that. They'll like um, let someone mount them or let someone sweep them or. And I just don't think that's good jujitsu. So, like, to me, that's, like, cons of, of sub only, even though, you know, they might want to be mounted to try to get some crazy leg lock or something, you know, or get to a different position. But um, I don't think that's, the, like, better jujitsu. Maybe that's an old-school mentality. I don't know. but It's definitely um, a tactic. And you know what? I'm yeah. guilty of doing it myself. I don't know if yeah. it's because I'm older and I get tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just let the guy, I'll let him pass and I'll try to do my little reversal that I do and try to reach yeah. the position afterwards. Yeah. And it's, it's a, you know, Hey, like all competing is, um, it's a sport. So, you know, you have to have tactics and you have to have a strategy, you know? So sometimes that's what you got to do. Hmm. And you were saying that you have adults and kids doing this tournament. So how, early, how early do you start the tournament and, and when does it end? Do you find it, it's an extremely long day? Or are you able to get the tournament done by five, six o'clock? We're able to get it done in a in pretty reasonable time. Um, we usually start around 9. This one will start around 9, and hopefully we'll be done around 3 o'clock. Um, that's usually about the going time frame. Um, I'm hustling all day, like running all over, just making sure everything's like running smoothly. So um, I'll be extremely tired by the end of the day. Um, <laughs> one of my students was like, why don't you compete in the Super Fight in our show? I'm like, you don't even understand how I feel after a tournament. Like it starts at five o'clock in the morning, loading up stuff in the truck and then setting up and running all over to try to make sure everybody's happy and everything's running smoothly. 
there's no way to compete on my show. I just don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> How many people you got uh, helping you out? To um, I got a lot of people helping me. Um, we get a lot of volunteers from the gym. Um, and then my partner, Sammy, he's the guy that does the MMA shows. Um, he helps me with the, the jiu-jitsu tournament. So um, we got a lot of help and uh, it runs, runs pretty smoothly. And you said when you, I think you said when you first started, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that when you first started, you had a good turnout. It was about 200 competitors. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Um, my now? first summer, it was around 200. And and now, I don't know how long uh, how long it's been since your first uh, tournament and how many competitors you have coming out now. So I would say we probably have like close to 300. Um, and that's probably, you know, give or take. But um, we've done, I think, four or five tournaments. Okay. So... Is still, we're still kind of new um, yeah. as far as you know, tournament scene goes, but it's still respectable. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I think the number one challenge when I talk to instructors, uh, or sorry, not instructors, but um, people that that are running tournaments um, here locally, um, whenever I've mentioned sub only or even to um, other professors in other academies, um, you know, just trying to sell them the idea or even the thought, would you send your students to a sub only or would you host a sub only just to see what feedback they would give? They, they tend to always say the same thing, say that the day would never end. It would last forever. And, you know, sub only tournaments, you might have people stalling out positions and just, it, I, I think the main feedback is it, it would never end. And I always bring yep. it back to, um, uh, the, the grappling industries tournaments that they do they do a sub only no time limit for yeah. adults and kids and they get out oh. at, 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 at a decent time so if you're yeah. you know if they're able to do it then anyone's able to do it if you're putting you know five minutes eight minutes depending on the belt level um you're, you're kind of proving a business model that it can be done i think it just yeah. scares a lot of people because they think you know i'm going to get there at 5 a.m i'm going to get out of there at midnight because the matches are just never going to end long. But I think, Trey, yeah. you said that you guys even do it in a where it's not multiple mats at a time, right? You're doing it like one match at a time? Well, that was for the Super Fight show that oh, we did one match at a time. Okay. Yeah, but I am glad that you brought that up because there's still schools in the area that I know that they're skeptical. You know, they're skeptical about the sub only. Right. And, you know, and I just and I would encourage anybody that would listen to this, just give it a try. You know, if it's a reputable person that you know it or a company tournament series that you know, like give them a try because like I've been to regular point tournaments that has gone till nine o'clock at night, oh, yeah. you know, and um, I think that's a misconception. Like we, we run pretty sharp and, and true to time. We don't. And um, I think the sub only is a great format for, for students, especially new students. They don't have to worry about points, you know. They just go out there and, and, and do their best and have fun. So I think there's too many pros that outweigh the cons for someone not to give it a shot, you know. And it's interesting because at the end of each match, there is a clear winner. You know, yes. it's, it's in your hands, right? You can't exactly. say, you know, I didn't, I, I lost. It was a bad ref decision. You, you had the chance to sub the guy and you didn't. So it just wasn't exactly. your day today. So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It is what it is. Like you didn't escape fast enough or you, you didn't get the submission. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking we do a Northeastern Canadian submission classic. That hey, I'm down good. for it, man. <laughs> Y'all just don't don't get me arrested. No, no, we'll get you arrested. <laughs> we can actually host tournaments like uh, I guess 40 minutes away in in, in one province over in Ontario. Yeah. So a yeah. lot of uh, tournament promoters are starting to go like close to the the two provinces in between both territories, right. which isn't so far. I think it, it just started back up now here locally that people are realizing that you know the the vibe is there. People will go out. They will compete. It's just to get everyone together to do it it's and that the last tournament that ray is uh, uh, referring to was the first yeah. one in this little town that is a border town in ontario so the next province yeah. over right so it's legal because it's there it's not here in quebec and uh that was the biggest turnout he's ever had he doubled his competitor count yeah. He had almost a thousand competitors at that tournament. Oh my gosh, that it, is crazy! It, yeah. it helps when you—it's been five years yeah. since people, you know. <laughs> so yeah. people from Montreal only had to drive like a half an hour, and then people yeah. from Ottawa, the next, uh, you know, you know, big Canadian cities for them too, it was about an hour drive away. So it was pretty much smack dab in the middle. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. That a thousand competitors. That's a lot of. That's woo. Hey Trey, yeah. I, I noticed on uh, on Facebook that you also have a line of supplements. Is that true? Well, that's um actually you talking about Instill Nutrition. I, I saw something about yeah, like yeah. Re, uh, Remedy BJJ supplements. I saw some some yeah. BCAAs and so that's uh that's actually that's not mine. And um, just to preference this, I'm not sponsored by them, but they do have a great line of supplements. Um, Instill Nutrition. It's an, um, they've been in the supplement game for a long time, so they're very knowledgeable guys. But they just like started a supplement line to like four MMA and four jiu-jitsu competitors, okay. and I, they're here locally in Pensacola. So I, you know, I see them at the scene and I know them, friends with them, and I said, "Hey, look, y'all need to make a supplement for jiu-jitsu people." Like you need to make a joint supplement for jujitsu people. That's like the number one, you know, concern for all jujitsu be like joints, all my joints, this, you know, that. So, um, I said that I've tried every joint supplement that there is that I know of. And I have one that I really like. And I was like, look, this is the one I really like. I like what's in this. I like the ingredients in it. It works for me. You need to take this ingredient, make your own supplement, add some stuff to it. And I think it would be a huge hit. So he did, and um, he, he called it joint J- joint jitsu, um, and he put that my picture on there. Um, but it's a great supplement, and he it's got um, type two collagen um, MSN um, in it, and it's it's amazing. So they're coming out with that soon. I'm not sponsored by them, but guys that are doing stuff for the jujitsu scene and the MMA scene, I want to support them. So. Um, y'all can check them out for sure. Nice, great. Yeah, I think I agree. Definitely. Uh, what, I guess the number one complaint to hear about people doing jujitsu whenever it comes to injuries or things like that, it people mostly complain about joint pain. You know, yeah. the, the grips and you're constantly pushing and pulling and whatnot. Do you do you do you use a lot of supplements when you uh, when you're either before training or after training? Have you been a supplement type of guy? Yeah. So like, I'm I'm not a huge supplement guy, but um. If I can get something that's going to help me not be so sore, I'm all I'm all for it, you know. So like um, BCAs, protein, just the simple stuff. Um, I've always taken. Um, I've got a friend that owns a Max Fit Nutrition and Pace, and very knowledgeable knowledgeable guy. Helps out some of our fighters. Um, I'll get with him, and he'll kind of say, "Oh, you need to try this BCA, help you recover." Or I'll get with the Instill Nutrition, and they'll they'll hook me up, um, tell me what I need to take. So. Yeah, I like like stuff, simple stuff that will help me recover after a hard training day. Do you do any uh, any conditioning for uh, for jiu-jitsu, like outside of jiu-jitsu? Yeah, so like when I when I'm competing, definitely. Um, I, I go to like the regular gym, lift weights and stuff, probably twice a week. Nothing too crazy, um, but like if I'm com- if I got a competition coming up, you know, I'll I'll amp it up and make sure I'm getting extra cardio. I'm not a big runner, um, but I'll do whatever I need to do to, you know, try to give me the edge. And are you still interested in competing? Uh, do you stay active on, on the competition circuit? Yeah. Um, so I haven't competed in about a, probably close to a year. Um, my last match was um, in New Orleans, a fight to win. Um, didn't go my way. But um, I plan on competing again maybe this summer. Um, I got two little girls at the house and a full-time job gym and trying to do tournaments. So like extremely busy, but I don't like excuses. So, you know, I can make it happen. Um, it's just trying to balance it all out really and truly like, you know, making sure that I'm, I'm giving enough time to my family and I'm giving enough time to this and that and other obligations that I have. So, um, I don't like to do anything like half speed if i really want to do it i'm going to give it my all so like competing i don't want to go in there and be like oh well i train you know twice a week and um you know that's good enough no it's especially not at the black belt level it's not good enough so um when i do want to compete i want to make sure that i can give it my all and it's just balancing everything out yeah 
definitely when you have lots going on, a full-time job, kids at home, it makes it kind of hard. And I, I tell people that all the time whenever we talk that jiu-jitsu isn't going anywhere. You know, their no. jiu-jitsu will always be here. So, you know, you got to make sure you take care of your family, make sure everyone's okay, that you're able to put food on the table. And then when you do have a moment, jiu-jitsu will be there. So <laughs> it's not going yeah. anywhere. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. And I, I think, like, I think some people get upset with me sometimes like, Oh, you didn't come to, to my event or you didn't, you know, you didn't come do this tournament or that. I'm like, man, I, I would love to come and support you, but you, you know, <laughs> I've got to balance it out before I get, you know, lose, lose my job, lose my family. You know, I can't, can't do everything, you know what I'm saying? So, um, it's definitely a balancing. Like you said, jujitsu will always be there. So, I might be in Masters 5, but you know, I, 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 I still plan on uh, competing, you know? I can't wait for Masters 3. That's what I'm waiting on now. I have a year and a half before I hit that Masters go. 3, so I'm excited yeah. for that. No, definitely. Uh, when it comes to your your, your family, I, I saw on Facebook that you're definitely uh, you're, you're definitely a family man. Um, do you, are, are, are your daughters also in jiu-jitsu? Do they, do they train? Yeah, that's a good question because, like, here, here's my theory on that. Okay, like, I have two daughters, five and two, and and they're the world to me. So, you know, they're no, you know, they're number one, and um, they can do whatever they want to do in life. And they can play soccer, basketball, cheerlead, dance, whatever they want to do. I'm going to support them 100. percent But jujitsu, they don't have a choice. That's like the only thing they don't have a choice. They they have to train jujitsu, um, and it's just a simple fact of self defense, man. Like the war this whole crazy world you know and like women need it more than men in my opinion you know it's so for the self-defense aspect like my little girls they have to learn jujitsu and then my theory is once they they can defend themselves against a grown man like the average grown man comes in the train and she rolls with them and chokes them out i'm gonna go to her and say hey look i feel confident that you can handle yourself in a self-defense situation would you like to continue training? She says, yes, daddy, I want to continue training. Great. Awesome. And she says, no, I don't really want to. I say, okay, well, that's fine. You don't have to. I'm going to test you every once in a while, you know? <laughs> um, but they, I'm going to, of course, make it fun for them and not pressure them to do it, but they have to, you know, learn how to defend yourself. Hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. We, we, we have this conversation with a lot of guests actually when it comes to training their kids and do they find it mandatory? And I think most people it's resonating that, you know, I, it's not we're for, yeah yes we're forcing our kids to do it but it's for the greater good and later on if exactly. they, like you said they they can defend themselves they could go to school and you you don't have to worry about when they're at school they could take care of themselves then they can move on to other things but I, I I'm in the same situation I have a a ten year old daughter who's going to be eleven and she has no choice but to do just she's a competitive swimmer uh, but she does jiu jitsu two to three times a week and she doesn't have a choice she has to do jiu jitsu. Exactly. She can go in the pool and have a not so great swim. We can't blame it on jiu jitsu. She has to be at class uh, the 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 following day, and she understands. You know, it's not a, a complaint of saying I don't want to go. She's never said I don't want to go to jiu jitsu once. Uh, she 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 does enjoy it. I, I I don't know what I would do if she didn't enjoy jiu jitsu. I don't know if we could trade kids. I don't know how that works. If I could just <laughs> hand her off and grab another one, not that I would ever do that because I love her to death, but. I, I'm very I'm very lucky, you know, to be a father that can say that she enjoys going to jiu-jitsu and training. And I think she likes the yeah. interaction with the other kids more than anything else. And I think later on down, down the line, she'll maybe appreciate jiu-jitsu for jiu-jitsu a little bit more. Because, I mean, yeah. at that age, you know, you were saying you have two girls, five and two. I mean, they just like spending time with other kids and being around other kids. I don't think they realize exactly what they're doing and the benefit that it will have long term. Exactly. But, oh, that's really interesting. And, and your wife, No um so like I'm, I'm pretty confident she's pretty scrappy so I, I feel like she can uh defend herself and you know over the years um we got married in 2011 but we've been dating longer than that i mean we've done jujitsu here and there but she's never done anything consistent i mean but i could I, she could slap on an arm bar so um good, yes huh? and no <laughs> that's better than the average person i would say yeah, it, yeah it's better than brian brian's horrible at arm bars yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> cool and, and what so what do you have lined up so you have the so you have the tournament coming up uh next weekend on april 20th if i'm not mistaken yep. can, can can people still register there's still time to register yeah absolutely and we do um registration at the door so you know people can jump in right there at the door um, and we have a pretty good system set up where they flow right in. Um, 
pay register everything and they're in the door um and so yeah it's 20th uh april next weekend and um looks like it's going to be a pretty good turnout for it that's great Ray, you better get your plane ticket now. Then my my, yeah. my wife will kill me. She <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It will not be good. <laughs> hey, I gotta have that balance, man. Yeah, she, so you're just talking yeah, about yeah. that balance. So definitely. Yeah. So so maybe uh, we could end on maybe tell everybody um, where your school is, uh, how they can reach you, your Facebook, Instagram, and all that social media fun stuff. Yeah, man. Um, so you can reach me Facebook Trey Alador. My spelled a little different. It's T R A, and then Alador is A L I D O R. Um, same with uh, Instagram is my name. Um, we have the Southeastern Submission Classic Facebook and then Team Remedy Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Milton, Florida. And um, if anybody comes to the beaches in Pensacola, Milton, and this area, please stop by and train. We're right off the interstate. Um, you know, always welcome people to come in. And I usually don't charge mat fees for people just to drop in and train when they're on vacation, you know. So um, drop in anytime. That's good to know. I got family in Florida. Yeah, man. Yeah, come on. That'd be great. I just sent you a friend request on Facebook, by the way. So if you see <laughs> awesome. a, yep. a BTT picture of Brian Gary, yeah, just yeah. <laughs> no, not no. a stalker. No. Awesome, Trey. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, hooking this up really quickly, too. Wish you all the best in your, in your tournament next weekend. Uh, like uh, like you said, you can find Trey on social media, on Facebook, some YouTube videos. You want to watch some highlights of Trey doing arm bars, go on YouTube. He's got his, high, his Blue Bell highlights on there, too. Uh, Trey, again, I really appreciate the time, and thanks very much for being on. Hey, I really appreciate it, guys. Um, y'all uh, have a good day, and uh, thanks for having me on. You've been listening to Let's Talk Jiu-Jitsu with Raymond Terrence. Go follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. Turn on notifications and press that like button. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the mat.